Hey guys, this is Pesh from Vivo.com and this right here is the new Realme 7 Pro which, by the way, also comes in this buy box. Yeah. Now, that aside, this has to be one of the most interesting smartphones that I've used off late. I mean, let's face it, the Realme 6 Pro that arrived earlier this year had some compromises, but the Realme 7 Pro, this brings some great upgrades, some nice changes and some really interesting features, but also at a slightly higher price. So the question is, should you pay more? Should you buy this over say the Poco X2? Well, I've been using this phone as my daily driver, so let's find out. So one of the biggest issues I've had with phones in this sub 20K price segment is the fact that they're all too big, be it the Poco X2, the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max, or even the Realme 6 Pro. Now compared to those phones, I like the fact that the Realme 7 Pro is well, more handy. In my usage, there hasn't been a day where I felt like the phone is too big or too heavy. It's very comfortable to use and it's very important. To put things into a little perspective, here's the dimensions and weight comparison of the Realme 7 Pro, the Poco X2 and the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max. Now, as you can see, the Realme 7 Pro is a little smaller than both of them and a lot lighter and 182 grams. Honestly, I could feel the difference in weight while I was using it. Now, one bummer when it comes to the design is that it's a plastic back and next to the Poco X2 and the Realme 6 Pro, yes, it does not look as fancy or premium, but in my opinion, it does not look cheap at all. The good thing here is that it's a matte finish which looks and feels better than the glossy plastic. I also like the blue color variant and this new split design. Apart from that, there are the usual buttons, the usual ports, the dual SIM plus micro SD dedicated slot, and they don't have any problems. Now, apart from that, the design of the Realme 7 Pro brings two upgrades that you know make a lot of sense to me, the display and the speakers. So, yep, Realme has finally heard us and after the X2, they are back with AMOLED panels. The Realme 7 Pro comes with a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display and this is great because this is a big upgrade over the IPS LCD panel on the Realme 6 Pro. I mean, this is AMOLED, so it's obviously very attractive with very deep blacks and punchy colors. I mean, here's the Realme 7 Pro display in comparison with the OnePlus Nord to, you know, compare the AMOLED panels. And yeah, the Nord AMOLED is a bit warmer but both of these displays have the same rich colors and black quality. As for versus the Poco X2, the Realme 7 Pro display just looks more vibrant and more attractive. To be honest, the Poco X2's display is a little brighter, yeah, but that's not a huge difference. Look, I think AMOLED is a great thing on the 7 Pro. I know the Poco has the 120Hz refresh rate, but like I've said time and again, AMOLED over LCD for me. So AMOLED on the Realme 7 Pro is nice and with Widevine L1 on board, Netflix shows and movies play in 1080p and they look great. So it's been mostly good but there's one bug that I came across. So when I started using this phone, at night the screen would automatically get warm, yellowish, even with the eye comfort mode turned off. So let me just show you this. As you can see there's some blue light filter on the screen as it looks very warm and yellowish. But when I check in the display settings, the eye comfort mode is off. In fact, if I turn this on, it gets even warmer. Now, this is a software issue, not a display issue because changing the time manually fixes this, as you can see. Anyway, so I went online to look for, you know, solutions to this issue and found that this has been an issue on previous Realme phones as well and Samsung phones too, with a bug bringing the night mode settings from the last phone you were using with no way to change that. Now, there are also some ADB solutions, a solution with activity launch and different threads, but nothing worked except for me hard resetting the phone and not signing in with my Google account in the first set of track. So yeah, that fixed it, but this is quite a weird issue and I think this only affects people switching from stock Android phones to you know this phone, for example, and I hope Realme does something about it. Anyway, since it's an AMOLED panel, the fingerprint scanner has moved from the side to the front and that's a good thing because the on-screen fingerprint scanner here is very fast, so that's nice. And not just the fingerprint scanner, the face unlock is pretty fast too, like on every other Realme phone. So unlocking the phone is pretty smooth. Now, apart from AMOLED, there's one new design feature that I really, really appreciate, and that's the inclusion of stereo speakers. So basically you get a speaker at the top and one at the bottom, and obviously the bottom speaker is a bit louder and more powerful, but the top speaker isn't too feeble or anything, so that's pretty good. But let me just play some music. So as uh, you can probably notice, uh, the combined dual speakers are very loud and uh, yeah, you also get the stereo speaker impact and that's pretty rare in this price range, so I like it. Another area where the Realme 7 Pro comes with upgrades is on the camera front. 
So this is the quad camera setup that you get and yeah, it's the same as the Redmi 7 with the same IMX682 primary sensor. So that's good, but there's one downgrade. See, unlike the Realme 6 Pro, which had a telephoto lens, the Realme 7 Pro does not come with a telephoto lens, which is a little sad because a telephoto lens instead of the two 2 megapixel lenses would have made the setup better. Anyway, other than that, I think the cameras here are pretty good, but there is one issue that I'll talk about. So I've taken a lot of photos with the 7 Pro, so check them out. Now, the daytime shots are well exposed. There's good details and I also noticed some good dynamic range in some shots. Now, it's important to know that some shots do have saturated colors, which is a little much, especially when there's a lot of trees or greenery. But other than that, I like the camera performance here. In low light too, the Realme 7 Pro photos are bright, detailed and sharp, which is very important in low light shots. And again, I noticed that the oversaturation is still here in a few shots with some greenery. Now, I obviously compared the cameras of the Realme 7 Pro to the Poco X2, which has to be the best camera phone in this price range. And the results were pretty interesting. So in daytime, I think the Realme 7 Pro and Poco X2 take very good shots and they're similar when it comes to details and dynamic range, but they have their advantages and their issues. So the Realme 7 Pro photos have better exposure in shadows, as you can see, but there's the oversaturation problem I talked about earlier. And the Poco X2 photos have the more natural colors, but sometimes it ups the contrast a bit too much, which is not something I like. So honestly, it's a very close call in daytime. In low light though, I think the Realme 7 Pro is better. I mean, the only big issue is saturation at times. But other than that, the 7 Pro photos are sharper and nicer looking. For example, take a look at this comparison shot. See how the Poco X2 has kind of made things fuzzy in the background? Now, check out this one. Now, I take it the Poco X2 shot is slightly brighter all around, but look at the lights and if we zoom in on the tree, notice the difference in sharpness and in details. See, like I said, both these phones have the problems, but they also take good photos. The Poco X2 is slightly better in daytime and the Realme 7 Pro is better in low light. Well, I've added all the high resolution photos in a drive link below, so you can check it out if you want a better clarity of this comparison. Anyway, as for the other lenses, the Realme 7 Pro's ultra wide angle lens is good enough. I mean, there's obviously lack of details when compared to the main sensor, but it retains the colors, so that's a good thing. When it comes to videos, there's 4K 30fps video support and here's a 4K video shot from the phone. Well, as you can see, the quality is pretty decent, although like the photos, the colors are a bit too saturated to make things look kind of attractive. Now, apart from that, there are some cool camera features on the video front that I've used in Oppo phones in the past. There's ultra night video mode, AI color portrait, and the other color filters like sky blue, forest green, etc., which are all very cool. And there's also portrait mode video, aka bokeh video support. So these features are cool and something people will enjoy. And I like the fact that some of them are available on the front camera too, which by the way is a 32 megapixel sensor now. And no, there's no ultra wide angle lens like the 6 Pro, which is a little bummer because I kind of like that. Anyway, so the selfie camera is good here. The photos have a slightly warmer tone, but with the beautification turned off, the details were very good. So I like it. Plus the front camera too gets features like portrait video and AI color portrait. So that's good. Look, overall, the camera experience on the Realme 7 Pro is good with the photos and videos that it captures looking good. But the only issue is the oversaturation, which kind of makes the photos and videos a little unnatural. But like I said, other than that, it's pretty good. Now moving on to another upgrade and that's on the battery and charging front. So there's a 4500 mAh battery compared to a 4300 mAh battery on the 6 Pro. So yeah, it's a minor upgrade, but the battery performance has been decent. I mean, the phone lasted me for around a day and a little more on most times with an average screen on time of five and a half hours, which is decent, nothing extraordinary, but yeah, it's decent. Anyway, the exciting upgrade here is the inclusion of a 65 watt SuperWook charger. I mean, this is crazy. This is kind of a flagship feature and you're getting it on a mid ranger so that's pretty exciting. So this charger charges the phone to 50% in 13 minutes, one three and it fully charges the phone from 10 to 100% in just 30 minutes. Yeah, three zero, it's crazy fast and I love this animation. It just gives you an idea of how fast this is. Now, along with all those great upgrades, the internals of the Realme 7 Pro remain the same as the 6 Pro. You get the same great Snapdragon 720G chipset and I like the fact that the base storage version is 128 GB because, you know, the price is also higher. Anyway, so we all know that the 720G is a solid performer and it's pretty solid on the Realme 7 Pro. For a phone at this price, I'd call the Realme 7 Pro a fast smartphone because the phone has been almost lag free for me. Yep, there was some stutter at 5% battery, but that's kind of expected. Otherwise, the phone was always fast and snappy, even while gaming. I played as for 9 and pub. Uh, 
COD Mobile and I got high graphics and there wasn't any lag. Also after an hour of COD, there was no heating or anything. So the 720G is pretty reliable on the 7 Pro. So it was overall a good experience, but the only thing that kind of gave me mixed feelings is the Realme UI. I mean, I like Realme UI, it's got all the features and on the Realme 7 Pro, it only has Realme apps and apps like Amazon, Facebook and WPS Office pre-installed, all of which can be uninstalled, so it's good. But there were a few annoyances. So when I was first setting up this phone, I obviously put all the apps that I used to install on the Play Store and after every installation, I used to get this full page prompt and yeah, some with ads and that's just super annoying. I mean, imagine getting these prompts 50 times while you're setting up your brand new smartphone. Yeah, it can be crazy. Also, I noticed a bug in the recent screen. So see this, you have the icons over the close all button. I mean, it's not a big issue, but it's not nice either. Anyway, other than that, it was all fine. And as for the ads, I did not notice any except for in those prompts I mentioned. See, I'll tell you what, I still have a positive feeling towards this phone, but yeah, these issues are something that really we should fix with an update. Now, when it comes to connectivity, I tested this phone with an Airtel SIM, a Geo SIM and a Vodafone SIM, and there weren't any weird signal issues or connectivity issues or even Volte issues. So I think that's pretty much sorted. So it's time for the conclusion. The Realme 7 Pro starts at rupees 19999 in India, and that's 2000 more than what the Realme 6 Pro costs right now. So yeah, it's obviously priced a little higher. So the big question is, should you pay more for the Realme 7 Pro? Should you buy this over say the Poco X2 or the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max? Well, technically when compared to say the Poco X2, you're paying 1500 extra because the Realme 7 Pro's base variant has 128 GB storage. Now, I personally think that paying 1500 extra for the Realme 7 Pro makes sense. I know this is not a perfect phone. The cameras though good have the oversaturation issue. There are also the bugs and Realme UI issues I talked about. And yes, the back is plastic. But you know what? For the extra price, you're getting three big features. The AMOLED display, the stereo speakers, and the crazy fast 65 watt charger. These are the features that make me like the Realme 7 Pro, even with its problems. So the verdict is, if you want these big features, I'd recommend you to go ahead and just get the Realme 7 Pro. Well, that was my review of the Realme 7 Pro, and I'd love to know your thoughts on the same, so comment down below. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to share it around for people who want to buy the Realme 7 series phones. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.